Okay, everyone, welcome to our November Opre Birth Speaker Series. We are so excited to have Kirsten Nielsen with us on how to grow a reader, talk, sing, read, write, and play. Kirsten absolutely loves her job at the Summit County Library as the children's librarian. Her many responsibilities include playing with Legos and kids during library playtime, singing the Itsy Bitsy Spider over and over at baby rhyme time, and building earthquake-proof structures with fourth, fifth, and sixth grade I Survive book club members, crafting <laughs> tissue paper pumpkins and feathered turkeys at library story time, and staying on top of the latest picture books, middle grade novels, graphic novels, series releases, and basically all things children's books and literature. She's recently served as the Youth Services Chair for the Utah Library Association. When she's not reading, she's volunteering as a pet therapy team with her sweet mini golden doodle, Pippi. Long stocking, of course, I love that. <laughs> and playing a fierce game of Scrabble with her husband or baking something delicious and sweet. So without further ado, Kirsten, please educate us. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and put my glasses on. I wanted you to know that I don't wear them all the time, but most of the time. <laughs> so <laughs> here comes my screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, great. Well, I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is obviously something that I'm super passionate about. And <clears throat> I just want to talk a little bit about kind of what happens at the library and some of the things that we do, and a lot about what you can do at home to help your kids get ready to read. But I wanted to start out by saying that um, <clears throat> As a children's librarian, sometimes parents will come to me and say, oh, my daughter doesn't like to read or my son's not a good reader. How can I motivate them or what can I do to get them to uh, be a better reader? And I always think of these three things. Sometimes there are things that I want to say that I wouldn't say, <laughs> um, but these are things that I always think of and they apply at different times in your children's life. So the first thing, and I think probably the most important thing, is that it is never too early to read with your child. Even, I would say, in utero, if you want to read out loud, that is great because they really benefit from hearing the um, rhythm of the language. And uh, it, once they're born, then they have uh, exposure to uh, vocabulary and all kinds of things. But we're going to talk much more about that. The next thing is, I always wonder, I don't ever ask out loud, but it's really important that your kids see you reading because then they know that it's something valuable that you're willing to put down your phone or turn off the TV or whatever it is and um, do your own reading for pleasure. And then the last thing is that I think it's important to let our kids choose what they want to read. You know, certainly they are told all the time at school we have to read this, we have to read that. But during the summer, especially, it's fun for them just to be able to read whatever they want. I know there are some parents who um, are hesitant about graphic novels, which if you have questions about that later, we can talk about that. Um, but any kind of book is reading, even an audiobook. So I had a mother come to me once and say, oh, he just, he only listens to audiobooks. And immediately I thought, well, have you had him tested for dyslexia? Because maybe it's really hard for him to read words on a page, but if he's comprehending the audiobook, that's huge. That's big. So I really love to talk when parents come with their kids too. I, I like to talk right to the child and ask them, what have you read that you liked? And you know, what kind of genre do you like fantasy or realistic fiction or even nonfiction or any of those things? So those are just some of the responses that I um, give to parents. I also really believe um, two things about this quote. One is I don't think JK Rowling was the first one to say it, but she's getting all the credit now. So anyway, <laughs> um, this says, those who don't like to read just haven't found the right book yet, which I think is absolutely true because maybe all of you can think of a time or a book, the first book that really 
drew you in, hopefully as a child. Um, sometimes that never happens. And then kids grow up thinking, oh, yeah, I'm not a great reader. I don't really read a lot. So as a, when your kids are young, it, and I would say in elementary school, it's so great to ins- expose them to all different um, kinds of genres and authors. And um, at the library, I'm always happy to help anyone find any kind of book and help any reader. What I really want to focus on, on though, is uh, the, the whole early literacy aspect of this. And I love this photograph for so many different reasons. But um, Amelie Buchwald said, children are made readers on the laps of their parents. And you can see exactly why in this photo, it's such an intimate um, bonding time to have your kids right there on your lap with that book so close. And it's just a one-on-one uh, experience where you're paying attention to them and interpreting the book with them. We'll talk about reading methods, but uh, let's see. I'm going to start by telling you about this um, program that all of the Utah Library Association adheres to. It's called Utah Kids Ready to Read. And there's a broader program called um, Every Child Ready to Read, which is a national program. And they, this is kind of a subset of that. So, but there are five things that we can do with our kids every day to help them get ready to read. And there are probably things that you already do. I, I love giving this presentation when it's in person and I can see people's reactions <laughs> because a lot of people think, oh yeah, I do that. I'm, I'm doing great. You know, so some of these you might do, some of them you might not do, but I can give you some ideas about, um, what they are. So I like to call them the five fabulous things we can do. And I know there's another fab five, but these are my fab five. So they're talk, sing, read, write, and play. And there's a little song that I have to go with that, that I can sing for you later. (laughs) But uh, these are all things that we do or well, Maybe don't sing every day if you don't feel like you're a singer, but we'll talk about those specifically in a minute. But let me go back to this slide. So that Utah Kids Ready to Read does have this website that you can see um, underneath their logo. And it goes through each one of these five practices or five methods that we can use with our kids. And it also breaks it down into age groups. So there's babies, toddlers, and pre-K kindergarten age um, suggestions. So it's a really, it's a great website and I encourage you to go there. So let's talk first about when you talk with your child. So the first thing I want to point out, I remember learning about this years ago and it just, it really opened my eyes because whoever I was listening to talk about it said, um, we need to use more than commands with our children. And if you think about your day as a mom, especially if you have elementary school kids or kids in school, uh, preschool even, we do a lot of like, oh, it's time to get up. Okay, put your clothes on, brush your teeth, breakfast, coming up breakfast. All of those things are commands. They're not a conversation. And sometimes I admit myself too, I have four children that you're just too tired to do any of this. So if that's the case, just take a bath and, you know, refresh and then come back. But (laughs) uh, some of the things that you can do when you're talking with your child is it, especially babies is what I'm thinking of here is you can kind of narrate the day and tell them what you're doing and talk about what you're seeing and, you know, where you're going, maybe in the car and use regular speech and vocabulary. You don't need to talk um, in a different voice to your kids. Or, I mean, some people have a tendency to do that, which is fine. But it's great for them to hear just regular language. Um, Also, if you're walking outside, which everyone does, I see a lot of strollers going past my house, you can point to the trees and the flowers and the birds and talk about all the things that are going on and the dog barking in that yard and and try to make up stories, just any kind of uh, situation where you can enrich some vocabulary for them. Even at the grocery store, you can talk about fruits and vegetables and um, and you can look for, for things that start with the letter C. 
and see if they can come up with that. That's for a little bit older child. You can also repeat what your child says and then add more words to that description. Like if you say, oh, what's this red fruit? And they say, that's an apple. And you could say, yeah, this is a red delicious apple, or this is a, you know, you, you we use these apples to bake pies in October. That's what we're going to do right now. So I'm sure you get the message that you just, it, it's great to provide them with a richness of um, vocabulary. And the last one goes back to what I was saying about using more than just commands, ask questions, have active conversations with your kids. All right. So the next one is all about singing. And every time I talk about this, people are like, oh yeah, I don't sing. I don't know. How. I can't, I can't do that. Okay. First of all, yes, you can. <laughs> and the beauty of this is that children have no idea what a good singer is or not, or if you can sing at all. And it's actually really fun once you get doing so doing it. So I would suggest that you hum and sing every day so they can hear that sound and listen to music, have music playing in your home, help your child. If they're young and you're holding them to feel the rhythm by swaying back and forth with them or um, tapping out the rhythm, clapping along with the words. The nice thing about singing is that it slows down the language. And so kids can start to hear syllables, especially if you're clapping the syllables Um at our story times, a lot of times we clap the rhythm so the kids can feel the beat and know that language and and uh, decipher the words as we're seeing them. It's fun to make up silly songs. I didn't tell my son this, but I do want to sing um, a song that we made up for him when he was 10. So he, he was a little bit older, <laughs> but we made up songs for all of our kids. This is the only one that stuck because he seemed to always know the answer to everything. So this was the song. It goes like this. His name is Hans Peter. Hans Peter is right again. We honor his name. We're pleased to be his relatives and witness his fame. <laughs> so now he's 25 and, you know, we don't sing it quite so much. But the point of that is kids love to have songs made up about them. And then they can use their imagination and come up with their own songs as well. So... Uh, let's see. I think I've covered a lot, uh, most about singing. Now, reading. So we've got talk, sing, read. See how big the print is there? Read, 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 and then read some more. And when your children are very small, it's great to choose. Let me see if I have a book on my shelf. I don't. Um, board books are awesome because they're pretty much indestructible. And we love it when toddlers check out board books at the library. They tend not to rip the pages out, which would be pretty hard. <laughs> but the best books to have for little, little babies, I would say zero to six months or even a year, are ones that have very bright colors, <clears throat> simple illustrations, and then have one image per page. So I'm thinking of those books I know DK um puts out things that's it's like play and you open it up and it just has a beach ball on one page or it just has um you know some an animal or something like that so that they can look at it and know that that there's that one thing now there are other books that you can add later i would say between the ages of you know 18 months to three where there are big spreads and there are all kinds of pictures and um those can be really overwhelming, even for an older child. So, but uh, the other thing about early baby books is the first colors that kids are able to delineate are red and black and white. And you'll see sometimes at libraries or at, at bookstores, wherever, um, sorry about my dog barking. I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, um, those books really appeal to the youngest kids and they can learn even at the earliest age, you know, zero to six months, how a book is to be held and opened and that we read from left to right and how you turn the pages, all of those things. And I can always tell when people come to story time or to our baby time at the library, whether or not they've been reading with their kids because they're, they know how 
instinctively to open a book. They know what's the front and what's the back, which seems like something basic, but it definitely has to be learned. So, okay. Other suggestions are when you're reading, change your voice, be animated, read with expression, make it fun and exciting and turn what you read into a dialogue between you and your child. I do that at story time all the time. I never just read straight through a book without saying anything else about it. So we'll turn the page and I'll say, oh, what do you see on this page? What do you think about, you know, what do you think is going to happen? All kinds of questions that can open up a conversation. Um, that's the value of reading right there. And then my last suggestion, because this is just a little uh, personal interest of mine, but I think it's really important to read diverse books to kids. Children need to find um, what in the library world we like to call mirrors and windows in the books they read. So they can see a reflection of themselves. Maybe there are kids that look like them in the book. Um, and maybe there are kids that don't look like them in the book and that are from another country or eating a different kind of food or doing you know some other activity that they don't know anything about. It's really important especially in this day and age, this global um, community that we live in, that kids are able to uh, develop empathy and recognize that there are people that are not like them, but they're still really great people. So anyway, that's my little soapbox about diverse books. Okay, so talking, singing, reading. Then, oh, I did put this one and I forgot. So this is interesting to me that young children whose parents read them five books a day, I admit that might be a lot. Um, when they enter kindergarten, they have about 1.4 million more words than kids who were never read to. That's a huge number of words and vocabulary that you just get through reading with your child. They really can benefit from that uh, vocabulary because then when they're learning to read and they sound out a word, they can look at it and and it's a word maybe they've heard before, but if they've never heard it before or seen it before, it's going to be a little bit harder. So that's another advantage to expanding their vocabulary. Now, writing is, you would think, oh yeah, well, they don't write until they learn how to read. However, there are lots of things we can get them ready to write by doing several things. So one of them we do in story time all the time. And that is doing finger plays like the itsy bitsy spider or um, stir a bowl of gingerbread or any anything that they can use and they need to manipulate their hands with patty cake, patty cake, baker's man helps them build fine motor skills so that if they can manipulate their fingers, then eventually they'll be able to pick up a pencil and hold it and be able to uh, write letters and um, manipulate something as small as a pencil. I would also... And I know sometimes this is hard, especially markers. That was always hard for me as a mom, but it's great to have markers and crayons and paper, especially you don't want to just scribble on anything other than paper, um, available all the time for our kids. At our, When our kids were growing up, we had an art cupboard and they could go in there anytime they knew the rules that they couldn't draw on the walls or the table or anything else, but they could find something to um, to make art with in there. And then after they would, you know, draw something or scribble if they were really little, then it's great to ask them, oh, so tell me about this picture. What's going on? Or, you know, and try not to lead them. See what they say about what they were drawing. Uh, the next one, I just emphasize art, 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 art. It's so great for the imagination. It's great for those fine motor skills. It's great to expose kids to all different kinds of ways to make art. One of the reasons that we do crafts at the library um, on our Friday story times is just to help develop these fine motor skills to help them get ready to be able to write. So, uh, and one last thing is you can help them trace giant letters with your finger. You can make letters out of Play-Doh. You can draw letters with sidewalk chalk. Our kids loved to paint uh, water on our, we had a big fence in our yard and they painted, you know, they would write their names in water on the fence and that could last for hours. It was really fun for them. <laughs> it was fun for us to watch. So the last one we have is playing. And this 
uh, for some people it really doesn't come naturally to play with their kids, but it's super important. So for little babies, of course, you can play peekaboo and you can do those finger rhymes. Patty cake, if you need a break, bring them to the library. We have our baby time on Thursdays at 1030 and it's a great group. It's for zero to three year olds. So there's a wide range. It's very, very fun. But the great thing about playing with kids and letting them play is that it encourages their imagination and it encourages, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Let me look here just one second. I'm sorry, my mind just went blank. That's what happens when you're over 60. Anyway, um, so I have here to use empty boxes and household items and blankets. Everyone probably remembers. I loved playing with blankets and pillows and making forts. It's great to have open-ended toys at home, like blocks and uh, Legos. We do a lot of Lego play. In fact, we're going to start up another Lego afternoon um, in December on Friday afternoon. So if you're interested in that, you can uh, check our website. But anyway... Open-ended toys are great because they can use them for lots of different things. We also, I keep plugging the library, I hope you don't mind, but also at the library, we have an open playtime on Tuesdays. Today we had it. It goes from 11 to 1230 and we just put out a whole bunch of different toys and we have a big um, carpet where we put our Duplo Legos and... They can just play. However, there's no direction. They can just do whatever they'd like. We've got lots and lots of toys and we get a good group there. It's really fun. So, but that's part of the reason that we do it is to just let them play. And also when kids get a little bit older, dramatic and pretend play, dress up and kitchen. We have a kitchen at the library that is always uh, occupied. Kids just almost wait in line to play with our kitchen and when I first started working at the library, we didn't have any toys. And this was when this whole uh, Utah Kids Ready to Read thing was really uh, getting started. And I remember thinking, no, we, we got to get some toys in here. This is not, you know, so libraries have changed and we have changed with it as well. So it's a very fun place to be. Okay, so, and also, again, play with them. Use your imagination. Help them or have them direct the play, tell you what to do, tea parties, all those kinds of things. And this is getting harder and harder these days, but it's really great to give our child or our children plenty of unstructured playtime because that helps them create uh, or use their imagination and to just come up with, you know, whatever they can. It, and instead of being always taken to a class or, you know, having, it, and especially when they have play dates, it's great for just, just to have them play. So, all right, let's see where we are. Okay. So those are the five, the fab five, talking, singing, reading, writing, and playing. And uh, I told you I would sing a song. This is how it goes. We'll clap. <laughs> you can clap with me. It goes like this, ready? I would play it on my ukulele, but I left it at my office. Okay. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Makes a reader every day. <laughs> All right. Just another library plug. Okay. The last thing I wanted to mention, and actually I spoke to uh, Laurel at Envision Utah this morning, and she said that she spoke to you guys uh, about a year ago about the Vroom app. Vroom is something that you can, it's an app you can download or you can go to their website. They, they will send you texts. And although they don't use those fab five um, suggestions that we do in the library world, it's so much the same. And what it is, is they give you a suggestion. They will they will text you or uh, send you a link every day if you'd like. And it will give you an easy suggestion of something you can do with your kids. So I um, put this example on this slide um, about what to do. It's a suggestion for what you can do when you're out in the real world. And this is something that um, I mentioned also already a little bit, but it's another, it's a different angle. And it says to point out things that you and your daughter 
or child have read about in books or seen in a favorite show like Dora the Explorer. Maybe you see a backpack and you say, oh, that looks like Dora. That looks like the backpack Dora wears or oh, listen to that train. Doesn't it sound like Thomas the Tank Engine? So, uh, and Vroom has a plethora of all of these suggestions and they are really excited to be able to share them with you. So I would encourage you to download the Vroom app or at the very least to look at uh, the website and see what they have to offer. We're also going to start at uh, a partner. We have a partnership starting up with um, Envision Utah as well as the health department to offer some parenting classes and to help especially new uh, parents, of, you know, young babies learn more about early literacy. So we'll continue this conversation. And if you're interested in that, you're welcome to email me. And this is my email right there. And there you've grown a reader right in your hand. <laughs> so that's all I have. I would imagine there aren't a lot of questions, but uh, I just want to thank you for inviting me to be here. And please stop by the library anytime. I'm happy to make recommendations or suggestions, even, you know, if you need ideas for Christmas presents or for great books or anything, I'm happy. I'm there for you. So I really, really love my job. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. I'm going to just stop our recording. Okay. Unless Joanna has a question. 